Alrighty, let's take a look at this question. So we have a box with an open top to be constructed from a square piece of cardboard, three meters wide. So I've kind of drawn a picture there, and they say we're going to cut out a square. So we're getting rid of this square, these squares in the corner, which means then we'd be folding the box along, or the cardboard along these lines. And when we do that, we would get this shape down here. Um, and it would look kind of like that. Excuse my 3D drawing. Okay, now when we fold it up, we don't know how big a square is we're going to cut out from each corner. So that's kind of one thing we don't know. So we're going to mark that as X, as I've done on the square um, figure. Now when we fold that up, that would meant then make the height of that box equal to X. Um, now the, the length and the width will be the same, but we need to figure it out. Um, we don't know how big a square we cut, but we're cutting two squares from each um, side. So that means our length of three would get reduced by two of those x's. So our length of our side would be three minus two x. And there we go. So now we've labeled the box with that variable, you know, don't know the size of square cut out from it. And let's read the question. We want to know find the largest volume. Okay, so that's important, largest volume. Whatever, whenever you're doing this type of question, you want to focus on what you're minimizing or maximizing because that's going to be your main equation, the one you want to focus on. So volume of the box would be length times width times height. And in our case, the length and the width are both 3 minus 2x. And the height is just x. Alrighty, now our equation is actually in terms of only x, so we're good as far as taking the derivative, although personally I wouldn't want to take the derivative right now to find the largest volume because we've got like triple product rule. So let's multiply things out. So if we multiply things out, we'll get 9 minus 6x minus another 6x, so minus 12x plus 4x squared. That's all still multiplied by x. So we'll multiply that through, and we'll have, I'm going to write it in descending order, 4x cubed minus 12x squared, and then plus 9x. Alrighty, time for the derivative. The reason why we do the derivative is because that is where we are going to be finding the maxes and the mins. Like, think about on a graph, the maximum would occur where the derivative is equal to 0. The slope of the tangent line is 0. Same thing for min also derivative or slope of the tangent line would equal zero. Anyways, okay, so the derivative of v, so v prime equals, we're going to use power rules, so multiply down the three, decrease your exponent, same thing for the next term, and there's our derivative, 12x squared minus 24x plus 9. All right, now to find out where it's going to be a max or min, we set the derivative equal to zero, and we're going to factor that to solve for x since it's a quadratic. So Thinking greatest common factor, let's pull out a 3 first. And then we are going to factor that. And we should get, let's think about this for a minute. I'm going to try the 2x and the 3 and the 1. Yep, that works. Both minus signs. Good. Okay, so now that we have it factored, we set each factor equal to 0 to figure out our 2x values. And you probably run the Wondering why there's two x values? It's a good question. So x would equal one half, and the other one, x would equal three halves. Hmm, okay. Well, they can't both be right, right? Um, so let's think about this. Now, if your teachers encourage you to do a number line to show which ones are the maxes and which is the min, I would do that. So you could put one half on there, three halves, sub values less than one half into your derivative. I'd probably use this version here of the derivative to see where it's positive and negative. And let me just do that. So let's say we put 0 in. We have negative, negative times. So negative times negative is positive. If I put like 1 in, I'd get positive times negative, so negative. And then above that would be positive. So um, that means we are increasing, then decreasing. That would create a max at x equals 1 half, and 
then we're increasing again, so that would create a minimum volume when x is 3 halves. That kind of makes sense because we not only have those restrictions, but logically x, if you were to cut out, the smallest x could be would be 0, right? It has to be greater than 0, otherwise we can't make a box, can't fold it. The biggest it could be would be half of 3 meters because if we cut any more than that, we're cutting away the entire box. So it has to be less than 1.5 or half of 3, which as a fraction actually would be uh, 3 over 2. Let's use that instead. Ah, 3 over 2. That's why we're getting a minimum there because we'd be cutting away the entire box. Okay, so 3 over 2 is not a reasonable answer. Plus, we've already shown that the maximum volume would occur at x equals 1 half. Now, have we answered this? Find the largest volume. So since we want volume, we are going to sub back into our volume equation up here. Sub that x value in, so 3 minus 2 times 1 half. Uh, and then times 3, oh, I guess I could just square that. That would be much easier than writing that twice for doing this part of it. And then times x again, 1 half. So three minus, oh, 2 times a half is 1, 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4, times a half is going to be 2. And units would be meters, it's volume, so cubed. And that is our maximum volume, or largest volume. And there we go. I hope that helped.